Here is the video presentation to at Compute 371 series of computation by Jiang Zhen and Liang Kuang. The material is from Turing machine to undecidable problems. So the question is why the Turing machine? There are several answers. Push down remote are too restrictive to serve as models of general purpose computers. Turing machine with unlimited and unrestricted memory can do everything that a real computer can do. So the next question is what is the Turing machine? Turing machines are a formal model of computers consisting of a tape with a left end and extend indefinitely to the right, a finite control with a finite number of states, and a read right head. One example of Turing machine is shown as below. This Turing machine is to recognize the non contest free language by checking both sides of the sharp symbol, and if they don't, or no sharp is found, reject, when all symbols to the left of sharp have been crossed off. Check for any remaining symbols to the right of sharp. If any symbol remain, reject, otherwise accept. For basic operations, Turing machine assumes that the left end of the tape has a special symbol at first at each step. The machine reads the symbol and then decides to enter the next state where the symbol or move the reader right head. When it enters a halting state, computation stops. So we could see that Turing machines are deterministic. Formal definition is defined by a quintuple that is similar to finite automata. Then the question is what the configuration is for. It's for specifying the status of a Turing machine computation. The details are shown below. Turing machines in tabular form are complex and hard to interpret, so we need a hierarchical graphical notation. In this case, we start with two kinds of basic term machines, simple writing machines and head moving machines. Later, we need to combine term machines by designing the operation details which is shown below. And the recursive languages are used to decide whether the term machines should accept or reject strings, and how term machines behave based on inputs. The formal definition of a recursive language is shown below. To put it in one sentence, a language L is said to be recursive if and only if there is a Turing machine that decides it, and the recursive is also known as Turing decidable. We can also think of the process of converting the input to the output by a Turing machine as evaluating a function. This function is recursive if there exists a Turing machine so that all the mapping in this function could be computed by Turing machines. For recursively innumerable languages, it's more about whether a term machine is same size as a language. We say a language is recursive innumerable if and only if there is a term machine same size it. Recursive innumerable, also known as term acceptable. Based on what we learn, there should be a language hierarchy so that we could say it's recursive or recursively innumerable. innumerable. Also, there are many types of Turing machines. In this presentation, we will focus, focus four of them, including multiple tapes, two-way infinite tape, random access, and non-determinism. We should know that the operation of a machine allowing some or all of the above extensions can be simulated by a standard Turing machine. These extensions do not produce more powerful machines than the standard Turing machine. And language that can be decided or semi decided by these extensions can also be decided or semi decided by its a standard Turing machine. For multi tape Turing machine, every multi tape Turing machine has an equivalent single tape Turing machine. Two way infinite tape is, is, is different as one tape always contains the part of two way tape starting from the first input symbol and the rest on its right. And the other tape contains the part of the tape to the left of the first input symbol in reverse order. A standard Turing machine can in turn simulate these two tape machine. A random access Turing machine has key registers, a program counter, a one-way infinite tape, and a program. And a random access Turing machine is described as a program that consists of a sequence of instructions any language decided or semi-decided by a random access Turing machine can be decided or semi-decided by a standard Turing machine. For non-deterministic, the machine can may per proceed according to several possibilities at any point in a computation. Also, there are decided cases and semi-decided cases in non-deterministic settings. If a non-deterministic Turing machine semi-decides or decides L, then there exists a standard Turing machine that semi-decides or decides L. 
A more general understanding of this case is that the computation of non-deterministic is a tree, where each branch of the tree looks like a computation of an ordinary Turing machine. As there are many ways to define variance of a Turing machine, but all of them have been proven to as powerful as a standard Turing machine model. There are other computational models. All of these systems def cannot define more languages or solve more problems than the standard Turing machine model. The Church Turing thesis says that if some algorithm exists to carry out a computation, then the same computation can also be carried out by a Turing machine. It's a statement which characterizes the nature of computation and cannot be formally proved. Nevertheless, this hypothesis now has near universal acceptance. To put it short, Church thinks the intuitive notion of algorithm is equal to Turing machine algorithm. In this case, every problem can solved by intuitive notion of algorithms can also solved by Turing machine. And Turing states that any process which could be naturally called an effective procedure can be realized by a Turing machine. That's all for the first part. Then let's welcome Zhang Zhen for the second part. Hello everyone, I'm Su Changzhen, who is responsible for the second part. We first review the definitions of recursive languages and the recursive enumerable languages. The language decided or accepted by Turing machines. When well, Turing machine M accepts all the strings in L and rejects all the other strings not in L, we call M decides L and L is recursive language. When well, Turing machine M holds on strings in L, and doesn't hold on the string not in air. We call M semi decides air, and air is a recursive enumerable language. The Turing machines that decide uh, language are um, algorithm, while Turing machines semi decide language are um, not uh, algorithms. We take a review of all the languages we have learned in this course and provide the relationships between them in this figure. Best view in color. Furthermore, we review the color property of the mentioned languages under the five operations in the following table. The regular languages and the recursive languages are closed under all the five operations. The context free languages are not closed under the in intersection op or complementation operations. The recursive Enumerable languages are not closed under the complementation operation. We then talk about a very important Turing machine, the Universal Turing Machine (UTM) for short. There are other variants of Turing machines, such as multiple types, two-way infinite type, random accept, and and non-deterministic Turing machines. Here we only focus on UTM. UTM is a Turing machine that takes the encodings as input. We design three type Turing machine to simulate the UTM that runs on the string W. We encode a Turing machine. The translation is a quadruple encoding uh, states P and Q, symbols sigma and T. We have also designed some rules to encode states and symbols for running the UTM. Next, we explore the disability and undisability uh, problems. And we will also discuss the relationships between decision problems and the languages. Decision problems are the problems that can be answered with yes or no. Solve a decision, decision problem equals to decide whether the given string is in a certain language. If we aim to demonstrate a decision problem is undecidable, we can check whether the corresponding language is not recursive. We then talk about the halting problem, which is one of the first problems that have been proved to be undecidable. Given an arbitrary Turing machine M and the string W, we need to answer whether M holds on W. We, to answer this question, we can instead decide whether the encoding M W is in a certain language. Under the case of halting problem, we need to prove the language H is not recursive. 
For the undesirable problems, we provide some typical undesirable problems, such as halting problem. The empty stream problem, we provide the correspondences between the given undesirable problems and the converted problems. Readers can check the, uh, these correspondences in detail on your own. Here we can quickly go through the halting problem. The halting problem is defined as follows, given the twin machine M and the input string W. Does M hold on input string W? We can convert this problem to the equation H equals MW when W in LM. With these undecidable problems, we can use them as the decidable facts for proving other problems on a decidable through the problem reduction. In detail, to prove, prove a problem is computationally undecidable, we can utilize the problem reduction technique. If problem A can be reduced to problem B, then A can be solved using the solution to B. The general steps to prove problem B is undecidable are as follows. First, assume B is decidable. Then we reduce problem A to B. For example, we can use problem B to construct the Turing machine of problem A, but A is known as undecidable. We can get a contradiction and prove problem B is undecidable. We provide a simple example for how to use the problem reduction. We define the halting problem as problem A and aim to prove the, that the empty string problem B is undecidable. Following the list of steps, we can first assume K1 is not rec it is recursive and Turing machine M1 decides H. We can successfully construct MH that decides H using M1. We first draw MH on inputs uh, M and W. We then construct another Turing machine M W on an empty tape. We write W on its tape and state um, to simulate M. If M holds on the input string W, then M W holds on the empty string E. Otherwise, M W loops forever. We draw M1 on M W. If M1 holds at E S and M MH should hold at ES2, and vice versa. It's a contradiction, and we can prove that K1 is not recursive. That's all of our presentation. Thanks for listening.